All right, working our way down the toolbars menu here, we are working with shapes today or primary shapes that you can create. Let's get into this. Now over here in your tools menu or your tools toolbar, you're gonna have these shapes up here. You have your square or rectangle, you have your circle or ellipse, and then you have your polygon. Hotkeys, control or command R for your rectangle, control or command E for ellipse or circle. Uh, your polygon does not have a hotkey or a shortcut. So you're just gonna have to click on that guy. All right, let's start with our uh, rectangle or square. So control R. By default, from where you click, and you hold down and you drag is how this rectangle is going to be shaped or square. So there's horizontally perpendicular and vertically perpendicular lines being created here. Um, but the length of those lines or the shape of this square or rectangle is all dependent on where your second point, which is directly opposite from the point that you started lands. So there's your rectangle with 5.122, uh, height 3.2702, and that's in inches. Control Z to undo that. Holding down, or clicking, and then holding down Control and Command will draw this from the center. So before it was drawn from the point that you clicked, Control Z to undo, point that you clicked and pulled down, or up, or in any direction, but away from it. That's the starting point. If you hold down Control, it's gonna be from the center. Control Z to undo that. Shift will create a, I'm sorry, on your rectangle. This also works for your circle and your polygon. So we can just do this on your circle. Holding down shift will create a perfect shape. So we're working with the ellipse or circle. This is creating a perfectly round circle and that's holding down shift. If I'm working with a rectangle, hold down shift. And now that is a perfect square. Polygon, pull out. That is a perfectly sized polygon by holding down shift. But again, that's from the corner. Now, if I wanna create any of these from the center or circle, I'm gonna hold down control and shift as I click, and that is gonna create a perfect polygon from the center. And the same goes for circle, and the same goes from square. Now we can edit these shapes in a couple of different ways. Uh, one way to edit the shapes is their size, and you can do that in the numeric edits toolbar up here. Again, a locked aspect ratio. Right now, this is 3.94 inches uh, on all four of the sides of this square. And if I want to change any of those numbers, let's say I would just want to make this a five inch square square. Now, both the width and the height are five inches. And that's with the locked aspect ratio. But if I want to change one of these sides to 10, the width, now it's a rectangle, 10 by five. So you can do that. You can also change that by percentage. And we've gone over this uh, a little bit. The rotation, we can change the rotation angle of this control Z to undo that and control Z to do undo the side of it there. And then again, you can change these numbers from inches to millimeters uh, with this little button up here. Another way you can change different aspects of this, uh, any of these shapes is in the shape properties. And if you don't have that, you can right click on your menu. Shape properties, you can turn that on and off. So if we go into shape properties here, uh, you can see power locked, uh, the width, height, corner radius. And now we can change the corner radius and you can see it's got curved corners now. If I wanna go in the opposite direction there uh, and have those curved corners uh, opposite way, uh, you can do that here as well. There's another way to do this, um, and that is by holding down control while that rectangle is selected, and you can see this little blue dot here in the corner. Now, if I pull up, you can see that uh, I have those inverted radius or radii, this rectangle, and again, I can go and create smooth corners. I can turn it into a circle if I want or smooth out the radius of those corners. So a couple of different ways that you are able to edit the shapes that you create there. Now on your polygons, there are different edits on those in the shape properties. Again, you can change the size and rotation and all that stuff in your in your numeric edits toolbar, but in your shape properties, instead of that corner radius, you have sides down here. And now we can select what type of polygon we have. You can go to triangle, square, and so on and so forth. Um, and this by increasing the number of sides that you have. You can also on the shape, hold down control, just like we did on the 
rectangle, we held down control and we're able to alter the corner radius. If we hold down control on a polygon and grab that shape, we can drag up and down and change the number of sides that we have or decrease the number of sides that we have, uh, changing the type of polygon that we have. So a couple of different ways to edit those. Another way to edit these shapes is in the node editing window or by editing the nodes in those shapes. So if we click on this, you can see that no nodes actually pop up. And that's because these primary shapes need to be converted to a path in order for them to actually have their nodes editing. Once you do this though, you will no longer have access to change the number of sides uh, that they have or the corner radius or anything like that, unless you do that manually with the handles or by adding or subtracting nodes from those shapes. In order to convert these shapes to a path, you will select that item, right click down here, convert to path, or select control shift C. And now you can see the actual nodes of this shape. There you have it. Your primary shapes are not as in depth of a learning curve as some of the other parts and pieces that we're gonna be going over in this series. And you will see that we are utilizing multiple pieces from Lightburn together to make editing and creating a uh, possibility. We've used different uh, windows and we've used different toolbars and different commands in conjunction with the parts and pieces that we're creating in order to get a pleated part or an edited part at least. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate you checking out the video and stay until the end. If I missed anything uh, or you had some comments that you wanted to add, throw them down in the comment section below. Let's hash it out or just help each other out. If you found this useful, if you wouldn't mind liking, uh, if you think somebody else will find this useful, if you don't mind sharing, and if you want to see more of this information or more tutorials like this in the future, subscribe, hit the notification bell. On the next video, I think we're going to hit the trim shapes tool and possibly add the tabs tool in with that. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyway, we'll catch you on the next one.